fly. Not hailstones. I know we've beat that to death, haven't we? Or they've beaten my plants to death. I'm looking for white fly and other pests and all things like that. We may have a couple of grubs here and there on the tomatoes. Um, you know, the, the white butterfly does its great, it's a great job in laying eggs all over the place. And the grub or the, the larvae get into that and start destroying the fruit. But we haven't got any white fly and really we don't have any other problem other than just crazy adverse weather that goes hot one day, cold the next. It's 18 degrees and windy, cloudy over the top. So we've dropped, you know, almost 20 degrees, eight, 17 degrees in temperature differences between one day and the other. So you can appreciate you, you as a human being or me here feeling the cold difference, you know, the, the weather difference being so dramatic. How do you expect the plants to tolerate that? Now, on the topic of plants, I want to start from the top. I want you to look there, I'm not going to talk about it, from there, all right, and we're going to follow all the way down. Keep coming, keep coming, come along, all the way down to here. Down here, down here. See this down here? That down there. Let me do something here. Oh, I shouldn't do that. I should do this. This is how we're pre well prepared we are. Look at that digging. Look at that. I've got a root system there. See that root there? Okay. You know what that's doing? Have a guess. What's it doing? Sucking water up, absorbing nutrients. How? This is where we are at in our lives, folks. I want to take us back to more than 50 years. Not 50, let's go 60, maybe 70. If you can remember parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, uh, people, friends, or anybody you knew back then, if you are old enough to remember back then, or even ask your parents if you're a young one, ask them how they garden, what they did to grow a wonderful garden. Now, why I say that is because around the 40s, 50s, possibly 60s, yes, the introduction of fertilizers. So post-World War II, we had the introduction of synthetic fertilizers. Now, initially, in, in, uh, you know, in the first instance of um, discovery, wonderful, it's great. Science is so important for us, as we all know, the importance behind it all for better health and, and living and livelihood. But the problem we have here is that we are greedy. As humans, we become greedy. We find opportunities. We're very opportunistic. I'm an entrepreneur. I love doing crazy things, bringing out new products and ideas and methods and, pro and tools and things like that. But I like to do a little bit of research. In actual fact, a lot of research. And where I'm going with this for you folks is understand how we used to garden. Think about where we've come to today. And I've said it and I've, beat it to, I've beaten it to death. Your food, your food source. You know the old saying, you are what you eat? Well, are you really? Do you know what you eat? Do you understand the quality of food you have? Now, I, if those who follow me on our social pages or Facebook in particular, I did a quick post earlier on today. I was at Craig's place, dropped off some fertilizers, the new product we have. And we, you know, a five minute visit became a, an hour and five minutes of talking about soil. Craig, you're listening. I can't remember half of the names of those microbes and fungies and those little stretchy little stringy things, but you can share those with us <laughs> on this post or in your own leisure. People visit craigcastry.com.au, uh, a wealth of knowledge as well. And you know, we, when he and I get together, it becomes a really deep, meaningful, to the point of the minute, you know, two thousands or 32 thousands of a millimetre topic. We're talking about the smallest of smallest of microbes and fungi. The importance of that, when I talk about fertilising your garden, it's feeding your soil. What we're actually doing, we're going to change the way we actually say these. I'm sorry, I'm watching cocky sitting on the top of my uh, conifer plant there. As long as they stay over there and be out of my garden, I'll be fine with that. But look at that. Now we've got the magpie turning up and he's shooing him away. He's scaring him off. There he goes. All right, so back to the topic. Fertilising your garden, we say the words fertilise, feed your plants, you know, uh, all those sort of words that mean food for plants. It actually, I think, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is my humble opinion, we should be populating the, the life in our soil, our soil's life meaning the microbes, the, the, the fungi, the mycelium, and all those wonderful little, you know, the microflora of our soil. We need to populate that. Now, if you want to say feed, feed the microflora in your soil, feed the microbes, the, the fungi. That's what you need to look after. So the more of these wonderful li living organisms we have living within our soil, in our soil, within the root system, the better your plants will be. That synergy connection between our plant's root zone 
and all the other living organisms, including the fungi and the mycelium, which is the stringy bits. And there's so many other parts to that world that they connect so well together. They have a better understanding of what it takes to survive without the intrusion of human hands. You know, we get involved, we pump synthetic fertilizers or bad chemical based fertilizers. What that does, it kills off. It's it, the, the, the Yes, there are microbes that can absorb and, you know, detoxify lots of things. But if you're constantly putting in these synthetic fertilizers, what you're doing is creating a barrier between the micro life, the micro flora in your soil, obviously, and your plants. Your plants have lost that connection. They rely on that fertilizer. Now, I don't care what company it is out there, what they can prove that how benefit it is. Long term, we know from the studies in long term scenarios, our soils are being depleted of life. They're being destroyed. The topsoil has been eroded away and whatever's left, we're putting the wrong stuff into it. I beat it to death and you may say I'm plugging my products. Damn right I am because they bloody work. They are the right thing for your soil, for your conditioning. You need to populate. Now we're onto the superfood. That is just life in a teaspoon, complete life. You can have, and, and Craig claimed this as well earlier. He was telling me there's more life in a teaspoon than there are humans on this planet. Not alive, living and dead, past and present. There's more life in a teaspoon than there have been humans on, on, the, on the face of this earth, walking this earth. So can you appreciate just saying that? And now we're going to get into the microscopes because he showed me his microscope and he showed me a fractal needle, whatever they call that thing. We're going to go into that. We're going to go to Craig's place as well and sit down and talk about this in depth and beat each other's brains to death until we can find a solution. Because the ultimate purpose here, and I'm putting it out there, Craig, if you're listening, is that we need to dumb down the, 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 the language of when it comes to gardening. We need to simplify it so that people... To, can learn and not simplify about how to prune a plant or you know grow a tree or train a plant it's not that simplify how life works everything from the ground foundation foundation is the key to all things above ground if you don't have the right foundation i don't give a stuff how big and strong you can build it above if the foundation isn't right it ain't going to stay there forever and that's the same with our plant life if you don't look after the microflora in your soil you're killing it so when you plant segue to a plug when you plant you need a biostimulant. <laughs> now the biostimulant is, because I'm laughing because Craig was talking about that, and I said, yeah, we got one. It's called E.K. Butch. That will help attract. So you plant something in the garden, keep it down, keep the solution to a quarter strength. You do not want to overfeed, again, I said overpopulate, or apply some of this stuff, stimulant, to try and attract more than you should at, at any one stage. So you don't want to overcook it because you can burn plants with over fertilizing for that purpose. So you want to stimulate your plants. You can do it as a new seedling, as a seed. You can do it as an existing plant. Stimulation, and that's a biostimulant. That's what this is, certified organic. Apply this at quarter strength, so it'll go four times further than you know the product's recommended rate for the purpose of populating the microbes in the soil. So EK Butch that. Now the other one is also the liquid gold. And you know how I talk about uh, superfood having uh, the exoskeleton uh, of the larvae, the, the shell of the larvae when they shed their skin and, and grow larger. That, that, that there itself, the properties of that, and I don't have the right terminology, but I know helps to stimulate the plant in a way that it becomes self-reliant on its own defense mechanisms. Which What it means is that if, if there's a bad smell in the air, you block your nose, that's self-reliant. So if somebody farts in your face and the wind's blowing this way, you do this. In the garden, when you've got the, the, the presence of shells like uh, uh, the, the larvae or lobsters or crabs, whatever it is, that um, stimulates the plant. It triggers the plant's defense mechanism. So less disease, if any, any at all, less insects because they can't penetrate through that. So that is so vital for the, the, the longevity and the health of your plant. So it's self-reliant, not on insecticides and fungicides. You know, if you've got a bad case of invasion, hit it. But if you haven't, you shouldn't have to spray it at all because the plant should be able to defend itself. Liquid gold, seaweed solution base and there are other wonderful like sea salt out there wonderful seaweed based solutions we like to think ours is better probably the same nah ours is better <laughs> i hope you're listening graham i love you mate um, seaweed solution comes from the same place where a sea uh, seafood comes from like our sa a hard shell or shellfish things like that so when you apply seaweed and i know through the meetings i've had or the seminars 
I'm not talking about seaweed based fertilizers, they stimulate cell wall thickness to develop a cell wall. So in turn what it's saying is what they're saying is that the plant builds its own defense mechanism which is growing a thicker cell wall. That is the same thing as the thou superfood. So you've got 200 times more microbes within a, a, a teaspoon in our superfood than you would have normally at any other fertilizer. And you've got the, uh, the shell of the larvae, which stimulates the plant's defense mechanism. So all these are what we're going to be starting to beat the drum on. We've got to get away from, and I've done it for years, but I'm going to keep pushing it harder, more prominent, no more synthetic fertilizers, no more insecticides, poisons. If you can't pronounce a bloody name, don't use it. I mean, I, there's a lot of words I can't pronounce and they're quite simple, that's just my bad mouth. But I'm talking about chemicals, all seriousness. No more chemicals in the garden. And back to the topic of food, and this is, I'm sharing, this is, uh, if I got the percentage right, and God knows I get a lot of things wrong. Names, hey Justin, my apologies, it's not Kevin, it's Justin from yesterday. So I got that out of the way. Sorry mate, I'll see you soon. Uh, but we we're talking about food from your supermarket and like Craig said, and I agree, I don't care if it's a supermarket, green grocer, any sort of commercial place, they all source it from very similar locations. And if you can't track how your food has been grown, you shouldn't be eating it. And I know that's a big statement because it's going to be virtually impossible for the, big, the, the biggest part of our population to become self-reliant overnight, but become aware of it. Understand at least that your food that you're buying from the stores probably only holds 10% of its nutritional value of what it should have, 10, maybe 20%. That's the max. That's because it's designed to look good, not taste good, feel good or be good, just to look good. They're hollow. They're sh there's nothing in them. Sorry guys if you're a grower and you're watching this, you know what I'm talking about and if you are an organic grower, get your name out there, get people to know who you are and let them follow you and start shopping from your door straight away. My dog just kicked me to get my attention, alright that's Cara and she's on veggies and homegrown meat. Folks, no bull, that's how we grow our dogs, they can get a few dog biscuits but reputable source as well. So, liquid eco butch to stimulate microbial growth because that's what you want around the root system liquid seaweed gold which is our liquid gold to stimulate self-defense mechanism our superfood just to boost it and our black grit to balance it all because it stops the leaching and it stops the overburning and feeding the plants or the, the microbes i should say see i haven't got my head around it exactly because that's what we work on microbes so this is a long-winded one it was meant to be short it's on our website vasiliesgarden.com everything's there and as we always say folks great products at better prices every day. That's VasilisGarden.com. For me, Vasily, Maresi.